Hello everybody and welcome to the second part of my future American tech tree analysis. In this episode we'll be dealing with the attackers, army bombers and the navy bombers and torpedo bombers. Um, not as many aircraft to go through as with the fighters I don't think. So this should hopefully be a bit quicker to go through. Um, this won't be the last um, episode, I'll be doing another episode on um, sort of summary of all of the tech trees and what I think should be added but um, this episode I'll just be dealing with the uh, um, the um, aircraft I've already mentioned so without further delay let's get started. Now the first aircraft we're going to be looking at are the A20 variants added into the game, the B, C, D and K version. Now the A20B actually um, resembled the DB7B which was um, also known as the Boston Mark III um, in RAF service, because a lot of these were um, also served with the RAF. Now, only 999 of these aircraft were produced, 665 of them went to the Soviet Union, so not that many actually served the United States Army Air Force. Um, I think the nose, um, I've got written here that it was um, slant um, stepped rather than slanted glazing in the nose. Um, I'm not really can't really find much else in, like information wise on this aircraft. I think it had the same armament as we have with the G um, version, although I could be wrong because I've also got them written down that um, the 7.62 millimeter machine guns were added in the nose of the C version. So I'm not entirely sure um, when the guns were added. Um, the Havoc Mark One we have in game has the machine guns already so I'm assuming it will come with the machine guns but just to you know in case it doesn't um, quickly moving on to the um, A20C which we've just sort of touched upon a little bit then this went back to the um, slanted nose um, for, um, gla slanting nose glass um, unlike the um, A20B which had the stepped um, so obviously they were trying out different approaches with that um, had new engines, self seen fuel tanks, more armour, and it could carry um, a torpedo, so I don't think the A20G we have in game can do that, so obviously that's quite, um, makes it a lot more versatile than um, the existing A20 variants. Not an awful lot else I can say about these two aircraft, like I say, um, they don't seem all that different, um, but quickly moving on to the A20D. Um, I actually had trouble finding this, um, but I did some searching around on the internet, um, and it turns out this was a proposed high altitude version. Um, intended to be um, the intended power plant was um, turbocharge, turbo supercharged, sorry, white cyclone radial engines. Now this was cancelled before production, um, so I assume it would have had the same armament. Possibly it might not have had the bombs. It might have been used as a heavy, like a high altitude fighter, or they probably would have done maybe two variants: one with the bombs, one without. Um, so this would be quite an interesting thing to have in game. Um, because we don't really it, it's sort of in game it's sort of used as a low altitude, hip, fast fighter. So I'm wondering what use this high altitude version will have in the game. Lastly, we have the A20K, um, which is one of the main differences is it's gone back to the glass nose. The A20 we've got in game now doesn't actually have a glass nose. I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning, but um, other changes include um, where was it? Uh, it's got a bombardier position in a different place, um, in the same position as on the A20H. So maybe that will help protect them like certain gunners and pilots so I don't know if um, different positions are moved um, I'm not sure if the bombardier can even be killed in the game at the moment but we'll have to see um, also had improved power plant and improved armament capabilities and updated on board equipment now I'm not sure what it means by improved armament it doesn't particularly say what this improved armament is possibly I'm guessing it will mean bigger bomb loads though uh, but yeah, I can't really comment too much on that. Um, so yeah, um, looking forward to the A20D probably the most out of all of these. Yeah, I mean it'd be good to see the lower var lower tier variants. But um, yeah, it'd be definitely be good to have the um, A20D. I, I think that'll be quite an in, um, an important one, sort of one I'm looking forward to the most. If it spawns at bomber height, it could probably be used as a sort of um, improvised bomber hunter because um obviously it's got quite a good armament and if it starts it's built for high altitude 
it could probably do quite well at hunting down other bombers. So yeah, that would be definitely a good thing to have in game. And yeah, so probably the A20D I'm looking forward to the most. Probably tiering and battle rating wise. Uh, prob lower tiers obviously will be lower than the A20G. Uh, the A20K will probably be a bit higher. I think the A20D will probably be about the same. Possibly higher it as well. But yeah, we'll have to sort of wait until it comes out in the game to see, I suppose. Now the next aircraft on that list is um quite confusing for a number of reasons. The A26, um, which was later redesignated the B26, is obviously is often confused with um, um another aircraft, the uh, Martin B26 Marauder, because obviously they were both designated B B26s, and obviously um there's a lot of confusion sometimes. I believe they're talking about the Douglas A26 on the tech tree. I'd be very surprised. Well, I wouldn't be surprised they're talking about the B26 Marauder, but um, I'm pretty sure they're talking about the A26 Invader. Um, very sorry I've got that wrong, <laughs> which would make this whole part of the video a bit pointless. But the other confusion is um, what variants are being added. Um, you're probably wondering what's the confusion it says the A26A and the A26B. Thing is, um, there's only an A26 B listed here. Um, I, the only A26A I can find is a prototype night fighter with a crew of two, and a um, which is an A26A, and uh, the prototype with um, dummy armament. Um, I don't think they'd be adding the prototype in um, the night fighter. Possibly, I'll, I'll deal with the the um, A26A, A26B, and the A26C just to cover all the bases. Um, the A26A, like I said, a prototype night fighter with a crew of two. Um, now the armament of the um, A26B, I believe, is up to um, eight machine guns, um, 50 caliber machine guns. So probably would be using that sort of armament. Probably wouldn't be armed with bombs, if I'm honest. We've then got the A26B, which is um, could be armed with up six to eight um, machine guns, and possibly another eight machine eight machine guns in um. Four optional underwing pods, so that could boost firepower even more. Maybe something like the um, um, BF 109s, which can have um, cannons added, and it could carry up to six thousand pounds or two thousand seven hundred kilograms worth of bombs in the in the bomb bay and in underwing hard points externally. Um, could go about three hundred fifty-five miles an hour, and rate of climb about six point four meters a second. So very fast, well, quite fast. Um, not too good at climbing, I suppose. I'm not sure what's really a good um, benchmark for climbing. Lastly, we've got the A26C. Um, this is apparently different in that it had a glass nose, so a bit like the A20 um, early variants we were talking about earlier. And um, two 12.7mm machine guns in the nose position. Probably, I think they'd be keeping the 6 to 8 um, 50 caliber machine guns that are already fitted, so this would probably be more like a turret position. So can add quite a lot to the firepower. Um, my thoughts on these aircraft, um, definitely very welcome additions to the game, quite fast, definitely well armed. Um, I've, I've always enjoyed playing with the A20, um, but I thought it was a bit of a shame there weren't more planes like it, so to have the A26 in the game would be very good. Probably a bit higher tier or battle rating than the um, A20. Um, the A20 at the moment um, has a battle rating of 3. They actually changed the battle ratings today, so they should be up to date and new. Um, so yeah, definitely welcome additions to the game. Um, my apologies for the confusion on which variants being added, but um, like I said, I can't find an A26A other than the Night Fighter version. Um, if I find any more information, I'll post it on here. If anyone else has information, feel free to post in the comments. I'll try and add it in. Um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to this aircraft. Now the next plane on our list is the A36, which was a ground attack dive bomber version of the B-51. Um, it, it was armed with um, look, six 50 caliber machine guns and up to 454 kilograms of bombs on um, the underwing hard points. Now it was quite a bit slower than the Mustang. Um, the Mustang P or the P-51D Mustang. I've is listed as going 437 miles an hour in my book. Online, I've got the A36 is 365, so nearly a uh, good 70, 60 miles an hour slower. So, um, yeah, this, um, I don't think America really has proper, di or has um, the SBD 
Dalton as dive as as dive bomber. He hasn't really got any army aircraft that can be used as dive bombers. So it'd be definitely a welcome addition to the game. Um, these were actually withdrawn in 1944 from operational service. So um, obvious. So probably going to be a lower tier aircraft. Um, if I had to guess, probably probably high like, tier two or possibly high possibly like about tier two I'd say. You can't see it being any higher than that. Um if it goes any lower than that, like to tier one, it would be in the same place as the Dauntless. You have a sort of um an over um lapping roles there. So probably a tier two aircraft on account of its armament. I don't think it has any rear gunners. Um no it doesn't have any rear gunners. Um but yeah this would be a good plane to have in the game. If it is tier two, it'll definitely um good pe counterparts to the B25s and um, A20s. So yeah, definitely a good plane to have in the game. Uh, yeah, hopefully they'll get it in game soon. Now the next plane on our list is the A1 Sky Raider. Um, as we can see here, Gaijin have written a little description. Um, was designed during World War Two as a single seat, long range torpedo dive bomber. Um, in service 1950 from 1950 onwards, armed with four 20 millimeter cannons, up to 8,000 pounds of ordnance, and 15 external hull points. Um, first went into action at the Valley Fall in the, from the Valley Forge on 3rd July 1950, and not retired until 1972, with the um, U United States Navy um, or U.S. Armed Forces, and actually serving with the French Air Force until 1976. Now we've also got the AD4 listed up here. As far as I can tell, it's practically the same, except um, strengthened landing gear and improved radar. Obviously, something that's not really going to make much difference in the game. Um, as far as I can tell, it has roughly the same armament as, as the um, A1 Sky Raider. Um, so, where would this go? Because um, it was introduced after the war, um, probably a higher tier aircraft. Probably going to go somewhere. Um, well, let's quickly go to War Thunder. Probably gonna be um up here with the FAF and the F eighty two I'm guessing. May maybe a bit lower or a bit higher, but that's roughly where I would put it personally. So yeah, definitely a good plane trap in the game. Um it's quite a lot of ordnance, so it definitely shake things up a bit, um to have an aircraft with so many bombs, if it gets all of the bombs of course. But if it does get all the bombs and rockets then yeah that'll be quite um, a major threat in the um, ground attack role. Now for the next bit we're just gonna quickly go to the Navy bombers and torpedo bombers. Um, we'll deal with the Army bombers last but um, the next plane on our list is the Douglas TBD Devastator. Now this was a um, it was a torpedo bomber that didn't it was well, it was quite obsolete by the time the war started. Um, a lot of them were destroyed at the Battle of Midway um, and they were withdrawn not long afterwards. Um, if some, some of you may have played Battle Stations Midway, um, you may recognise this aircraft. Um, it was a very slow aircraft, only 205 miles per hour of max speed, um, and a rate of climb of only 3.7 metres um, a second. It could carry one torpedo, one thousand pound bomb, two five hundred pound bombs, or twelve one hundred pound bombs. Um, had one 7.62 millimetre machine gun in the rear cockpit. And I think one 50 caliber machine gun in the front of the aircraft. It might have been a 7.62 millimeter machine gun. Um, can't quite remember. Um, uh, probably a lower tier aircraft. Uh, I, ca I can't see this being any, any higher than the TBF that's already in the game. Um, the TBF in game is at about a rating of 2.7. Um, I probably, if I'm honest, I'd probably put this somewhere between the Kingfisher float planes, which are about a rating of one, and and the SBD Dauntless, which is about a rating of two. So probably about what between two and one, maybe one point seven, one point five, I'd say. Um, it's good that this plane's been added into the game because um, for the lower tiers, um, there isn't really much for taking down any enemy ships. Um, Although I don't know if there are any really enemy ships to deal with in the lower tier, like the lower tiers between one and two. Um, yeah, but I'm good plane. It's a good plane to add. Definitely needed. Um, although, like I said, don't expect miracles out of it. It's not 
that great a plane if I'm honest, but yeah, definitely a good plane to have in the game. Now the next plane on our list is the SB2C1C and the SB2C4. Um, also, this is also known as the Hell Diver. Apparently, it wasn't all that popular with um, well, anyone. I, I, I mean, maybe I mean maybe they're just exaggerated stories. But whenever I've read or heard about this aircraft, it's usually something bad being said about it, like not as good as the Dauntless, despite the extra firepower and um, bigger bomb loads. Um, there was some sort of bit of a scandal or some sort of dodgy goings on. Um, the Truman Committee investigated um production of the hell diver. I believe there were some sort of problems with the engines or they weren't being built properly. Um not entirely sure of the whole story, but um quickly getting on to the variants being added. The SB two one C, uh let me find it. Um it was it was a um uh two twenty millimeter cannons and um obviously a bit of a step up from the S um the Dauntless which only has the two um 12.7 millimeter machine guns and the SBT 21C C4 if I SB2C4 sorry um again 220 millimeter cannons um both aircraft had, I assume had the um 7.62 millimeter machine guns in the rear of the cockpit um I've got it listed as being having a speed of 295 miles an hour and a climb rate of 549 meters per second per minute sorry um, now, um, bomb load 454 kilograms under e under the wing, and 454 kilograms internally. So, pretty good um, bomb load. That's a thousand pound under the wing and internally. Now, where would this go um, tier wise? Um, probably higher than the Avenger already in the game, but probably between the PBJs. Um, low tier, probably a low tier three, high tier two. Um, PBJ is a battle rating of 4, TBF is um, 2.7, probably a battle rating of 3 something, um, I wouldn't know exactly what. Um, it's a good plane to have in the game, um, I, I assume it will, pre will play out quite well, I mean, there's other planes in the game that didn't do that well in real life, but um, like mechanical wise or for whatever rate, handling wise, but that do actually quite good in the game. Um, because I think the ones in the game, um, I think they're operated on the basis there aren't any breakdowns or stuff like that. Um, I mean, the Comet w apparently wasn't that good in real life, but, um, does quite well in the game. But, um, before I get off track, um, so yeah, um, probably a battle rating of three something. Definitely a good plane to have in the game. Um, could also carry a torpedo, I should mention, apparently, um, from what I hear. So, could be used in a dual role like the B7A2 that the Japanese have. And yeah, just be a good game, a good plane to have in the game. Now the next plane on our list is the PBJ-1. Now this is a bit confusing for me because um, I've been having a look through, through my books and online. Um, there isn't actually a P all the PB all of our PBJ-1s, but they always have a letter after them. Um, and obviously this one doesn't. I did wonder if maybe the one was meant to be an I, but I couldn't find any PBJ eyes on here. So um, my Sneaking suspicion is that perhaps they're committed to adding another PBJ in, but they don't know which one to add in. So I'm going to quickly go through all of the remaining PBJs they could add. Starting with the PBJ-1C, which is um similar to the PB, um sorry, to the B-25C. Now the B-25C was the improved version of the B-25B. Um, it was the first mass-produced um version of the B-25. Um, nose armament had, it was increased, um, so it had the one fixed and one flexible um, 50 caliber machine guns like we have with the B-25 in game already. Other than that, not an awful lot difference. Um, it had, obviously, because it's a Navy version, it had the airborne search radar and an anti-submarine, and was using an anti-submarine role. Now, of course, we're not um, going to be getting submarines in the game, to my knowledge, so probably not going to be that version. We've then got the B25, um, the PBJ1D based on the B25D. This is actually the same as the B25C, just um, made in a different factory. But this had another 50, mil this had the 50 millimeter, sorry, 50 caliber machine gun in the tail and in the beam gun positions like the B25H. But again, used in an anti-submarine role and we fitted with airborne search radar. 
And lastly, we have the PBJ-1G, which is um, based on the B-25G, which has um, had um, more armour and a greater fuel supply. Um, out of all of them, I think we may end up just getting the PBJ-1G, um, because the other ones all more used in the anti-submarine role when we don't have submarines as far as I'm aware we're not getting submarines so the PBJ-1G would make the most sense I mean maybe there is just a PBJ-1 but I haven't been able to find one so yeah probably going to be quite similar to the um, P the B-25s and B PBJ um, um, PBJ-1J that we've already got in the game so yeah, it's good to have it um, in the game, but it doesn't seem like it'd be making that much of a difference, if I'm honest. I mean, again, good to have it in the game, but yeah, it doesn't seem, just seems to be padding out the PBJ Y, um, PBJ line, sorry. Um, unless, like I said, there is a PBJ one, in which case it may be something completely different. And I'll try and add information um, later on, or if any of you have information, um, feel free to put it in the comments, and I'll try and add it in for you. Now the next plane there list is the PB4Y2 Privateer, which is a long-range um, patrol bomber um, based on the B24 Liberator. Um, it's armed with up to 1250 caliber machine guns in six turrets and 5,800 kilograms of bombs, mines, or torpedoes, or 12,800 pounds of if um, you use pounds. Now where would this go on the tech tree? Um, not entirely sure. Um, it would probably be, well it's based on the B-24, so it would probably be about a tier 4 navalised aircraft on, on the PB, well not the PBJ line, but the um, maritime aircraft line. Um, it, it had a speed of 300 miles an hour, so um, where, how fast do the PBJs go? They go about 262 miles an hour, so faster than them. About the same speed as a um, B-17, a bit faster than the um, B-24 in-game. So yeah, probably about tier 4, pro similar barrel rate into the B-24 and B-17. They're both, B-17G, sorry, they're both about a um, battle rating of 6. Like I said, they've just changed the battle ratings today. So um, yeah, it'll definitely a, it'll be a good aircraft um, in the high tiers, especially if it gets um, torpedoes. Um, once you get to like a certain once you get out of the lower tiers, you stop really getting torpedo carrying aircraft in the American tech, tech tree. Um, so yeah, this would be good addition for the American tech tree. Definitely a good plane to have, have in the game. Um, yeah, def definitely good um, choice to from Gaijin to put in the game. Now the next plane on list, and the last of the US Navy um, bombers and torpedo bombers. Um, yep, yeah, there it is. Uh, is the AG, AJ-1 North American AJ Savage. That, um, Gaijin have done a little description of it. Now it was an attack bomber that was able to carry a nuclear weapon. Uh, we're obviously not going to get that in game. And was the largest aircraft carrier plane at, of that time. Um, apparently there was quite a bit of trouble with the aircraft carriers not being able to... Not that they weren't able to hold it, but it was getting in the way of flight operations because it was such a huge aircraft. And it was capable of flying at 471 miles an hour. Now, interestingly, it had two piston engines, but it had a turbojet engine in the fuselage. So it was sort of a hybrid aircraft, I think. A bit like the FR Fireball, which also used um, the um, piston engine and jet engine together. Um, it did not have any defensive armament, but could carry 12,000 pounds of bombs or 5,400 kilograms. Um, yeah, it seems like a right good aircraft. Um, I'm not sure how the jet um, propeller um, combination is going to go in the game. Um, I was hoping they'd put something like this, more specific, specifically the FR Fireball, but they've done it with the AJ Savage instead. I'm wondering how they're going to do it. Like, does the jet engine come on when you go up to high throttle, or is it on all the time and along with the propellers, or does it come under boost? Um, not entirely sure. Um, this will probably definitely be a higher tier aircraft. I mean, if we come here, 400, um, how many, 471 miles an hour. Um, that's faster than the Bearcat, almost as fast as the, well, about 50 miles slower than the Panther and the P-80. So probably between them two aircraft. Um, low tier 4, high tier 5. 
I mean, high tier 4, low tier 5, sorry. Um, definitely a good addition to having the game. Um, it would definitely be an unusual aircraft, and yeah, definitely a good choice to have in the game. And this next aircraft, which um, doesn't looks a bit weird if I'm honest, um, is the B-18 Bolo. Now, this was actually the winner of a competition between the B-17 Flying Fortress and the Martin Model 146. Now, you're probably wondering how could this win in a competition against the B-17. Well, the B-17 prototype crashed because it still had... Um, Gust locks, um, they sort of to keep the um control surfaces from like moving um while it's on the ground, being moved by the wind, and they were still locked when it took off and it crashed, and that disqualified it from the competition. Now the um B17 was eventually put into production through a legal loophole, but for the beginning at least, they had to go with the B18 Bolo, which is also cheaper, fifty-eight thousand five hundred compared to the um. 100,000 for the model 229, which was the original name for the B-17. Now, um, the B-18 Bolo, um, from what I understand, most of them were destroyed in the Pacific quite early on. Only very few of them survived. And, um, well, they were basically relegated to Radnity submarine roles or transport duty. One of them actually sunk a U-boat, one of the first apparently, in um, U-654 on the 22nd of August 1942 in the Caribbean. Now, um, bomb load and armament-wise, it could carry 2,000 kilograms worth of bombs, or 4,400, and three, it had three 762 millimeter machine guns. And these machine guns were in the nose, dorsal, and ventral gun turrets. So, um, well, let's find the speed as well, um, just to complete it. Um, it had a top speed of 216 miles an hour. Um, this seems like a very slow plane, and Honestly, it doesn't seem like it'll do that well. Um, it's got a very weak armament, very slow. It's got an okayish bomb load, I suppose. Um, honestly, I see this definitely being a very low tier aircraft. Maybe, um, maybe just after the PBY or just before the PBY. Um, I'm not entirely sure. The PBY has a fairly good bomb load. Um, something like four thousand pounds worth of bombs. So. That's already um, about the same as the B-18 Bolo. So, um, yeah, low tier 1, high high tier 1, low tier 2, probably um, probably quite a low battle rate. You know, it, it, there's just no way it could survive. Um, probably between the PBY and the A-20, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's a good aircraft to have, because um, obviously we, need to, uh, we do need a few bombers in the lower tiers. Um, other than the PBY. It's a bit silly that we have to use an naval aircraft in the bombing role. So yeah, definitely a good aircraft to add, but I just don't think it will do that well if I'm honest. I mean, I may be wrong, but based on the stats, it doesn't look like it's that good an aircraft, if I'm honest. Now the next aircraft we're dealing with is the B-34 Lexington, um, also known as the Lockheed Vent um, Ventura. Now this was a um, patrol bomber, um, bomber and patrol aircraft that was used mainly by the US and the British and Commonwealth Allies. Um, apparently wasn't well that liked by the RAF. Um, in, in fact there was one raid on, um, let me find it, Amsterdam where um, all ten of the, all ten sent across them um, to attack the target um, were destroyed and well it, it was better than the bomber it replaced, the, um, the Hudson, but um, it was sort of phased out in favour of the um, Mosquito, which, oh, Mosquito was a very good aircraft, so not too surprising that happened. But, um, quickly look at the stats, um, 322 miles an hour, um, max speed, rate of climb of 15.4 metres a second, which sounds pretty good. And it had 450 calibre machine guns and 230 calibre machine guns. And could carry one torpedo or 3,000 pound worth of bombs, or 1,400 kilograms. Um, where would this aircraft be on the tech tree? Um, I could possibly see this being a premium aircraft for the British as well, because it was used by them. But um, quickly looking at um, War Thunder, uh, wondering where it could go. Probably, um, I could see it going between maybe the A20 or, um, oh no, um, I could possibly, well the B25 goes 276 miles an hour. This goes about, um, trying to find it again. 322. I could see this possibly going between the B25 J20 and the B17. 
sort of as um uh, an in between the, the medium and heavy bombers sort of thing. But yeah, um, hopefully it'll be an okay bomber. I mean, it doesn't look awful, but it doesn't look really excellent as well. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to make of this aircraft really, but I think it could have a fairly okay role between the B-17s and the B-25s. Um, you know, sort of filling out that sort of area on the tech tree. Now the next aircraft on our list is the B-24J. Now this isn't too different to the B-24D that we've got in the game. Um, the main difference is it has a turret on the front of the aircraft rather than the glazed nose. Other than that, um, there's a few differences between the D and J. Um, like the um, the gunner positions are offset. Um, at the moment they're um, in the same place, which um, like they're in the same place on each side so it could get a bit complicated for them um, while firing and reloading so one of the positions is moved forward one's moved back just to give the gunners a bit more room so they don't get in each other's way during the battle um other than that i don't think there was particularly any other changes um i think um some of the turrets were changed around um other than, but yeah other than that i don't think there were many changes between the d and the j i don't think there was um any other differences on the J itself other than bomb sites and um, other minor changes that won't particularly affect us. Um, probably a bit higher tier than the B24D. Um, I think the B24D was recently moved down in battle rating, I can't quite remember. So probably to make way for the B24J if, I'm, if I had to take a guess. But um, yeah, good aircraft to have, but it just sort of padding, it seems like it's just sort of padding out the. Um, B24 line again, although with actual meaningful changes. Now this next aircraft on our list, the Boeing B29 Super Fortress, probably one of my favourite aircraft of the from the war, well of all the aircraft in the war. It was armed with eight 12.7mm machine guns in the four turrets, two on the top, two on the bottom, and three 12.7mm machine guns in the tail turret, or two 12.7mm machine guns and a 20mm cannon. So, very powerful armament, had a top speed of 358 miles an hour, um, could carry up to 20,000 pounds of bombs, although we probably won't get even, like, probably won't get anywhere near that in the actual game. Um, in, it did very good in real life, um, wasn't used against the Germans, but against the Japanese, they were used in high altitude bombing rates, out of range of Japanese aircraft and guns, but, um, this was ineffective partly because of the jet stream and which was sort of knocking their formations all over the place, making it very inaccurate to drop their bombs. So they went for low level fire bombing raids. And eventually at the end of the war, they dropped the, it was two B-29s that dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, where would it fit in War Thunder? Um, well, that's a bit of a problem because it served in World War Two and Korea. In Korea against jets, it was, um, it was when it was taken out of service because um, it just couldn't deal with jets. Um, now in game, I don't know if Gaijin are going to do it. I don't know if they're going to class it as a World War Two bomber, which would mean a high tier four, low tier five, or if they're going to class it as the World War Two and Korean War um, bomber. In which case, it's more likely to go against jets, um, which could be a bit of a problem. I, f I mean, if it's a World, War if it's classed as a World War Two bomber, going against high tier prop aircraft would make sense but against jets it wouldn't survive um so i'm not sure how they could do it with battle rate you know i'm not that high um, rank in war thunder so i don't know how battle ratings really work at the higher tiers but um yeah they need to do it in a way so it won't won't dominate matches but so it won't but it won't be dominated in matches by um jets and the like um but yeah other than that definitely looking forward to this aircraft um like I said, probably one of my favourite aircraft. Um, another important thing is the gunners, um, before I forget, the guns are actually remote controlled, except for the tail turrets. Um, so I don't, I'm don't. i wondering how the gunners being knocked unconscious is going to work. Because the gunners are actually in the, they're not at the tail, um, they're not at the gun positions, like at the turrets. So I'm wondering how that's going to work as well. I don't know if they'll make it so if the turret gets hit, it just makes the gunner, gunner unconscious to represent the turret being knocked out. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Gaijin deals with this aircraft. Now, for our last aircraft, some of you may recognise it. 
And you may also be confused by the markings um, of the United States Air Force. Well, this is actually the Canberra bomber that was given to the Americans to produce under license as the B-57. Now, we're, we're getting the B-57A, so an early variant. Um, Speed-wise um, and stats-wise, probably similar to the Canberra, but I'll read them out anyway. Um, 598 miles an hour was its max speed at 2,500 feet. Um, rate of climb 31.4 meters a second, so very good climb and speed rate and max speed. Sorry. Uh, now it's armed with 420 millimeter cannons or 2,000 kilograms worth of bombs in the bomb bay, including nuclear bombs, and 1,300 kilograms of on the four external hard points, including unguided rockets. Um, so 4,500 pounds in bomb bay, 2,800 pound on external hard points. Now these were used for a long time. Um, I think some of them were actually used in Vietnam. Um, by possibly probably by either by the South Vietnamese Air Force or the Americans. And three are actually still in use by NASA. Now this is an aircraft that had its first flight in 1953. So very long-lived aircraft, possibly longer lived than the B-52. I can't remember when that was introduced. Um, but about the same about the same time, I think. Um. So where would this go tiering? Probably it would be a high tier aircraft. It has to go against jets because it is a jet. There's no way turbo prop aircraft or prop or lower tier prop aircraft could deal with it. Um, it's got a decent bomb load. Got decent armament to protect itself. The um, well not turret wise, but um, the 20 millimeter cannons. Um, so yeah, high tier aircraft, high battle rating. Will probably be quite good in um. In um, yeah, a ground strike missions. I mean, can carry a lot more bombs than the Arado. So already, it's going to be quite fast, extremely well armed, large bomb load. I could, I mean, they didn't. I think this aircraft was actually ready for a while, but wasn't introduced because Gaijin didn't have any way to deal with the aircraft. Um, like for um, balance it out. Um, because people won't be able to deal with it. But now they've introduced higher tier aircraft and it's definitely good they're adding this in um definitely been looking forward to this aircraft and still am looking forward to it and yeah probably one of the aircraft i'm looking forward to the most other than maybe the b29 on the on the american tech tree so that brings us to the end of that episode on the american bombers and attackers and torpedo bombers um what aircraft am i looking forward to the most out of the bombers Definitely the B-29, um, no doubt about it. But the B-57A, I'm also look, looking forward to that as well. Interesting to see how the AJ-1 will work out in-game. The, and the Sky Raiders, the A-36 and the A-26, they'll definitely be good additions to the game as well. Um, I will be doing one more episode, um, just a general summary of all the tech trees. Um, well, not a summary, but sort of giving my thoughts on what planes should have been added. Um, Maybe um, giving ideas for the Italian and French tech trees as well. I was a bit disappointed there was no um, extra planes for the Italians or the French. Um, the French, I think, are only represented through premium planes at the moment. So I'll definitely be doing a episode on on them as well. Well, in the same episode as the next one. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, please leave comments and feedback in the comment section. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you like watching these videos and. Well, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.